Mm -hmm. um, how long will it take to get clients? So this one, I'm sure it's a very common one. <laughs> How to price my services? So I'm new. So when you're thinking about how to get clients, there are two things that work hand in hand. Then how do you create a portfolio if you don't have clients, but I mean someone wants to see your portfolio? So how do you create it? Hi everyone, my name is Miriam. Welcome to my channel. I have company with me today. This is Elma, who we've met before. We did um, a video on how to become a virtual assistant. She's a virtual assistant, expert in that field. People have been asking questions. Um, people have been asking how to start um, the virtual assistant business, how to get clients and all that. And so she's here with us to answer those questions. And I'm going to read the questions that you've been asking her and she's going to answer each one of them. The first question is, how to define myself as a virtual assistant with a niche in the huge sea of BAs. Okay, so when it comes to defining yourself as a virtual assistant, you need to start with you as a person. So think about yourself, think about what you're good at, think about um, your experience, think about your strengths and your weaknesses, and then use that to your advantage. And that will help you when you come to thinking about your niche because your niche is a mix of your passion, what you're good at. So if say you're passionate about, I don't know, helping people organize things or something yeah. like that, um, and then thinking about what you're good at, so maybe you're really great at events, for example, then putting the two together, um, you can say, okay, I am a virtual events planner, for example, or I'm a virtual events assistant. So defining yourself, like I said, starts with you as a person. Introspect and then take it from there. And don't be afraid to find a niche and to niche down. Mm -hmm. Because that's how you, you literally, like if you are speaking to everyone, you're speaking to no one. So if your niche is social media marketing, like, don't be afraid. You'll actually get clients um, much easier, actually, than if you just say, my name is Miriam and I work with online businesses. Mm -hmm. Doing what for online businesses? How do you help them? Yeah. Okay, so this is not part of the question. Uh -huh. But maybe someone wants to know, uh -huh. what's your niche? Okay. So, for me, I am a virtual assistant specializing in operations um, and systems like business systems and automation but um, initially when I started I was also doing admin but my business has grown and so I added somebody into my business who now just does like the admin stuff um, and in terms of who I work with because that also forms part of your niche um, I work with women owned MSMEs and multi-passionate women so women who are doing a bunch of different things and they're trying to be good at all of those things. So that's my niche. Like what I do and who I do it for put together. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, please don't be scared of me. She yeah, don't be afraid. Because clearly, like she said, she has someone else on her team. Yeah. And she's niched down. So yeah. you don't have to do everything for you to get exactly. like all the clients. Yeah. Exactly. Also because that means you've been greedy. And if you're trying to do everything, you're going to get exhausted and you'll burn out. Mm -hmm. Because also just because you're good at doing something doesn't mean that it's something that you should offer as a service. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, mm -hmm. Just because, say, okay, for example, I'm good at like social media. Like when I started, I was handling my own social media and stuff like that. But that doesn't mean that I should necessarily offer that as a service. A, because I've introspected, I know myself, I know I don't have the patience to offer that as a service for someone else. B, I'm not passionate about it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons I had to get someone to help me in my own business. I'm not passionate about it. If it was up to me, even, I would probably not be on social media. Yeah. yeah. So for me already, I know that's not something I can offer. And that's why I said, start with yourself, introspect, and take it from there. Okay, 
So just because you're good at something doesn't mean that you should you should use it as a niche. Yeah. Um if you have different strengths, then look at something that you're willing to do it in the long exactly. term. Exactly. Yeah? Okay, perfect. So the next one, Elma, how do I know what services to offer and do I need a degree? Okay. So this ties into the first question. First, no, you don't need a degree. And I feel like even the other video that I did yeah. here. Um, I said that for me, uh, my undergrad and postgrad degrees are nowhere close to bachelor assisting in any shape or form. Yeah. So I'm an engineer by profession, but when it now came for me to transition into bachelor assisting, I did what I just said for the first question. I introspected, I thought about the skills I already have, soft skills, technical skills, um, and thinking about what I'm really good at, what I can do. Also thinking about what people have said, oh my god, you know, actually, you're really good at doing this. Mm -hmm. Like, this is something you can do. Um, so, when you're thinking about your services, it's not always just about what you have a degree in, what you have a certificate in. It doesn't matter. I know so many people, even yeah. Miriam, yeah. like, <laughs> is an example. She's not doing necessarily what she started in uni. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. Okay, not really. I didn't do social media. Yeah. But I did marketing. But, she but did yeah, like yeah. I didn't yeah. do a degree in anything exactly. or social media. Social media. Sure. Exactly. Sure, yeah. So you don't need a degree, but what you need is knowing what you're good at, looking at the skills you already have, thinking about what you can monetize, and then in all honesty, you just need to have a plan. If you tell, if like now you say, okay, fine, so I know I have skills in, okay, I already have skills in marketing, but now I want to do like digital marketing or social media marketing, whatever it is, then you need to have a plan, like how are you going to adapt what you already have and turn it into that service that you want to offer. How to market my services? So how do I market my services? Where do I market my services? Okay, I think the first thing starts with do you know what services you're offering and do you know who you're offering them to? So a good example I like to give people is if you say that you want to be a personal assistant for social media influencers, you have no business using LinkedIn as your primary marketing platform. It does not make sense. Why? Because you're more likely to find these people who you're targeting with your services on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. LinkedIn, fine, they might have a LinkedIn profile, but chances of them actually having it and being active on LinkedIn are very rare. That's not where their primary business actually takes place. So think about, and then also just think about what you're able to do. So for me, I'm really, I can't cope with Facebook. I just, it's beyond my bandwidth. <laughs> it's beyond my bandwidth. Yeah. There's so much, there's groups, there's thing. I just, I can't. It's in my plan for like some time from now. But right now, like even between the time I started and now, I just, yeah. I couldn't do it. So thinking about what I can do, what I can do practically, what makes sense, what is sustainable for my business because also there's no point picking like your marketing platform or coming up with a strategy that is not sustainable for your business so you start doing it and then a few weeks later a few months later you kind of like it fizzles out then yeah there's no point that's what i don't know i don't know if you have anything to add about marketing because this is like my your thing for marketing i'd say if you don't understand your clientele then yeah. you can't the first question should be then how do i um know who my clientele is mm -hmm. and all that then once you have the answer to that you'll be able to know where, where to, to market, market. Yeah, exactly. because different kinds of people use social media differently Definitely. so like you said social media influencers have no business being on, on LinkedIn. LinkedIn really yeah um that's mostly for professionals so yeah. if you're using a social media if your clientele you know is social media influencers then you know where to find where them to find mostly them, yeah. instagram youtube you're going to find them there as well mm -hmm. yeah so i'd say understand your clientele then no matter then where to market yeah so this one i'm sure is a very common one 
how to price my services so i'm new <laughs> i want to i don't even know how to price my services yeah. at the same time i have bills i need to pay and i don't want to maybe price like you know too much because i don't have the experience yeah so as a start as a beginner how do i price my services okay cool so the first thing I'm going to say, even before I get into the conversation of how to price your services, is people will always pay for what they value. So even though you're a starter, a beginner, you have very little experience, that doesn't mean you should, you should price yourself like you're doing something for charity. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so in terms of pricing your services, this is a difficult conversation and I can't even answer it like here in this like video. but you have also talked about it on your instagram so i'm going to link her instagram and then you can please make sure you follow her because i've seen you talking a couple of times about pricing yeah okay. i have like two igtv videos one i've done i think it was myself and another va and oh was it just myself? no with another va and the other i've done with like an absolute like she's an insane pro in terms of like business stuff so two IGTV videos but also I'm going to shamelessly plug myself and say I have a toolkit oh, yeah. <laughs> that has a spreadsheet that can help you figure out your pricing right when it comes to pricing you need to first of all have a very clear understanding of the costs that are going to be involved when I say cost I mean everything including Canva including I don't know what else to be for me for quick books. like everything involved in the delivery of your services and the running of your business once you have a good understanding of that you need to think about the cost the, the amount of money that you need to make to survive okay not just to survive to live <laughs> surviving is, yeah so think about how much you need to make to live uh, because you're going to be paying yourself like this is how you're going to get money to sustain yourself so you'll be paying yourself from this money and then once you think about that you need to think about how much profit you want to have um at the end of the day no one just wants to work for the sake of working you want to make some profit you want to have something you know some nice icing on the cake to like crown everything so think about how much profit you want to make and then once you figure that out, divide that profit by the number of months so that you know how much profit you need to be making month to month. Um, and then from that point, you'll be able then to figure out also how many clients, you know, like how much you charge each client based on your capacity. So if you're in a full time job, for example, you're working nine to five and then you're trying to start out as a me, I would not recommend you have 10 clients. Mm. It's not practical <laughs> unless you're working for them like half an hour each, which and it's just not practical. Mm -hmm. So, with that understanding of your client capacity, maybe you can only work with two clients. Then you divide all of that and figure out how much you need to charge at the minimum. Please note, this is minimum. This is like assuming all the worst case scenarios. Mm -hmm. This is just the minimum of what you would ideally charge for a service or a package of services. Um, but yeah, the details like equation and stuff is on my Instagram, so you need to watch them. And the toolkit. And the toolkit, the toolkit is a really good guide. Yeah. So I'm going to link it. There's a link. Yeah, there's a link. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to link that as well in the description, so please check it out. Yeah. And then this one, which I think you're going to discuss later mm -hmm. um, in depth is how to get clients. <laughs> so how do I get clients? Because <laughs> that's the first question. I'm going to send it down to be a much of Yeah. Time. So then how do I get how do you get clients? So when you're thinking about how to get clients, there are two things that work hand in hand. Thinking about your lead generation strategy and your marketing strategy. So marketing, if you think about like what marketing is, me, this is my layman description of marketing. It's essentially telling people what you have to offer, like literally putting it in front of their faces and saying, this is what I have to offer. So when you're thinking about how to get clients, by this point, you should already know what kind of clients you're trying to get. 
like don't just say i started my business and i'm trying to get clients in fact people who dm me the first question i ask is what kind of clients and sometimes i find someone is saying oh i want to work with like architects or something i'm like you have no business being on instagram i mean okay fine you can find some architects on instagram but chances are you should like you should be on linkedin yeah. so first you need to know who it is you're trying to get as a client um and then from that point think about like what strategies you can use based on this type of client because um, by then you already know how they behave um their online habits and stuff like that and there's so many things you can use you can use like email marketing you can start like a newsletter you can use like freebies you can create a guide um like if you're a social media manager you can create like maybe i don't know like a free content calendar mm -hmm. or something you know something to get the leads you know coming your way but of course most importantly your marketing strategy needs to be on point like if if you don't know how you're getting in front of these people like really because even if you have a free guide how are you going to tell people about this free guide like you need to have a strategy in place so then now you think about your content and stuff like that that's the best answer i can give in summary yeah no it's actually good yeah it is perfect if you need a marketing strategy <laughs> i know <laughs> Book a consult with me and I'm going to search you. Yeah. Um, and then how do you create a portfolio if you don't have clients? But I mean someone wants to see your portfolio. So how do you create it? First of all, I tell people use your client, use your business as your first client. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, use your business as your first client. So if you are telling me that you are a social media manager use that business that you started or that side hustle whatever you want to call it use it as your first client let me see even just by coming to your page the evidence that you know what you're talking about so if you are telling me um all of these strategies how to create content and structure my content let me also see it on your page like let there be that example that i can see oh actually she or he really knows what they're talking about like okay they look like they know what they're talking about right so what i like to tell people is um create a capabilities deck or like something that allows you to not just showcase your experience but also showcase your capabilities so i know how to use these tools these are the services that i'm really good at offering um you can even like put like i know somebody today actually asked me um i've only done office work and now i'm transitioning and i said you've done office work i'm sure you have like a reference from someone like in the office someone said wow like i gave them xyz to do and they did an amazing job that already can work for you so don't like be so narrow-minded and focused on the fact that in this particular thing you don't have testimonials or references yeah. you probably do right so think about those other areas that you've done something um put that there and just make sure that it's very clear don't lie <laughs> yeah please don't because you don't be caught lie. lie you'll be caught yeah. if you say that you are good at data analysis in excel don't lie <laughs> Because me, I know people who can do something in Excel and yeah. shock you. And that's a person you're lying to, Imagine. that you know how to do this, don't do it. So you'd rather literally have one service in your portfolio or your capabilities deck, but it's, you're genuinely good at it. Rather than trying to show you can do 500 things, and a lot of them are. Yeah, you can't be sure. Or you know how to use this tool. I know, don't say <laughs> And you don't know how to use it. You're going to get caught. Yeah, you will get caught. Also, yeah. by the way, if you get the toolkit, there's a guide to help you create a portfolio. <laughs> Shameless plug. 
check the description box. That is how you should be going now. <laughs> okay, after watching the video. Yeah. Okay, and then how to gain trust. So how do you gain trust? Because I mean, I'm assuming people need to have some trust in yeah. you before they um, trust you with their business. Yeah, yeah. So how, how does one gain that trust and how does one establish themselves as an authority? So there's this thing called the no like trust thing, I don't know, mm -hmm. funnel, whatever. Essentially, before I trusted you and even to know you first. Yeah. So we, we had that initial conversation and then we would talk more and then I started to like you and then eventually got to trust. It's the same thing with business. Just because you've put one post on Instagram and then you're saying, oh my god, like, no one wants to be my client, like, people don't listen to what I have to say, like, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. We need to get to know you. Show us more, like, put out more content, like, give us an opportunity to know you. Then from there, we like you to the kind of content you're putting out, the quality of content, you know, you are educating us, you are inspiring us, like, we are getting to know more of who you are and to like what you're putting out there and then people will get to trust you. It doesn't happen overnight. It really doesn't. So just be patient. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't That's the thing I think in any business that I've learned. Yeah. Be it product based or service based. Oh, you need to be patient. Um so if I have many clients, how do I organize myself and make sure that I deliver to each client without affecting the quality of my work. Okay, so for this Step one is to understand your capacity. Is it one client you can handle, ten clients you can handle, five, whatever. Then next, you need to have a good understanding of your work patterns and your habits. Uh, when are you most productive? How do you like to organize your work? Do you like to start with the hard and long tasks or the easy, quick tasks? You know, like figuring out so that also when you plan your day, you know, okay, I like in the mornings I will be focusing on like the hard long tasks or maybe the quick easy tasks whatever and then just put time in your calendar to do things I know like this doesn't always work for for different people but um, putting time even if it's just loosely structured like maybe from 10 to 1 is client work or I don't know even if it's loosely structured but at least it means that you have this time in your calendar dedicated to whatever it is you do. So is it to individual clients or do yeah. you see from this time to this time we're just working on clients? It depends. It depends on what works for you. For me, I actually blog for specific clients because um, it kind of goes in line with how I work. Like. I like to start my day with the quick, easy tasks so that I get them out of the way. Mm -hmm. And then now I will do the hard, long tasks later on in the day. Also when I'm able to kind of zone in. Um, yeah. So that that's how I do it personally. I like to have time with each client. Mm -hmm. But there are people I know who just block time with their calendar for focused work and that's when they do client work. I guess it's what works for you. Finally, the last question. Mm -hmm. um, how long will it take to get clients? It's very relative. <laughs> yeah. It is very relative. Um, it, it, it's just very different for different people. Um, I know like people who... So my most recent cohort of the Jumpstart program is guys who finished in December, just before Christmas. Um, I know like a good percentage of them already have clients. Okay. So it's just about whether you put in the work at all. Because uh, it's not easy. Just because you put up a post doesn't mean you're going to get clients. True. So there's a lot more that goes into that. Um, for some people, it can take months. Really, at the end of the day, it just depends on how you package yourself and how you market your services. And also, don't be afraid to sell. How am I going to buy from you if I don't know what you're selling? You know, um, I see a lot of people saying, oh, but I don't want to sell my services because people will think I'm selling too much. I mean, 
if you know like you need to tell me what it is that you have me meaning your target client <laughs> say what you're selling for people to know you know mm. that they can actually buy from you yeah i have to comment on that the first one i saw a post on instagram today and mm -hmm. someone was saying that thing for businesses trying feeling like you know you're being too salesy and all that mm -hmm. and basically what they were trying to say is but someone followed you knowing that you're a business exactly page. so if you're not selling trying to please them yet yeah. they you knowing that you're a business page they might as well and follow you if they feel like you're selling too much because that's why you have a business page exactly. but there's something you've mentioned mm -hmm. um you've said you jump start program that's people who attended it in december um have clients yeah. so what is jump start oh yeah okay so the jump start program which is actually the the next cohort is in march um and so over a period of five weeks we have um two sessions each week divided into modules um and i essentially take you through everything that you need to know to start out as an a launch and run your own successful thing so we go through everything from how to figure out what services to offer how to find your niche marketing your services where to market she does the social media marketing oh, yeah. module yeah. um pricing your services coming up with your contract your proposals um nailing your discovery calls all the way to like even the systems that you need to like set up for your business and stuff like that so literally end to end from start to finish um and i would say like i personally think it's really really great because when i started um there was not much information that suits vas within the kenyan or the east african market mm. so i found a lot of information online uh, a lot of really good information but it took me so much time to adapt it and make it work for me who's trying to be a VA in Kenya. There are so many things that are so different, like the pricing structure and thinking about like the different systems you can use in your business. There are so many apps and tools that are so amazing, mm -hmm. but you can't use them in Kenya, you know, like so spending so much time finding alternatives, like it was just a lot. Also the Kenyan market is really different. Kenyans buy very differently. Very differently. Mm -hmm. So that's what the Jamsa program is. And I think probably maybe by the time this video is going up, it's going up next week. Yeah, so we'll have we'll have the sales page and everything, and, and it's gonna be linked here in the description. Perfect. So thank you so much for yeah. answering our question. I hope you've learned. If you want to start a career in all this, please make sure that you attend the Jumpstart program. Clearly, she said that a lot of her clients already got clients yeah so make sure that you know you the, it doesn't hurt paying for knowledge yeah and if that knowledge is going to take you 10 steps ahead right. then it would have if you know you had to start from scratch do all the research and someone who's experienced all this and so she's sharing that knowledge with you i'm going to link everything her email her instagram um links to the toolkit to the jumpstart program mm -hmm. so make sure that you Check her out on Instagram, make sure that you email her if you have more questions. And if you want to attend the Jumpstart program, please make sure you sign up. The link is in the description box and also get yourself the toolkit. I will see you here next Tuesday. In the meantime, may all your dreams and goals come to pass. Bye-bye.